Hey, um, I have recently read two different poems um, about, this sounds weird, uh, touching strangers. Um, they seem kind of similar to me and I like them a lot, so now I'm going to read them too, so I hope you like them. The first is called The Hug and it's by Tess Gallagher. The Hug. A woman is reading a poem on the street and another woman stops to listen. We stop too, with our arms around each other. The poem is being read and listened to out here in the open. Behind us, no one is entering or leaving the houses. Suddenly, a hug comes over me, and I'm giving it to you, like a variable star shooting light off to make itself comfortable, then subsiding. I finish, but keep holding on to you. A man walks up to us, and we know he hasn't come out of nowhere, but if he could, he would have. He looks homeless because of how he needs. Can I have one of those? He asks you, and I feel you nod. I'm surprised. Surprised you don't tell him how it is, that I'm yours, only yours, etc., exclusive as a nose to its face. Love, that's what we're talking about. Love that nabs you with, for me only, and holds on. So I walk over to him and put my arms around him and try to hug him like I mean it. He's got an overcoat on so thick I can't feel him past it. I'm starting the hug and thinking, how big is this hug supposed to be? How long shall I hold this hug? Already, we could be eternal, his arms falling over my shoulders, my hands not meeting behind his back, he is so big. I put my head into his chest and snuggle in. I lean into him. I lean my blood and my wishes into him. He stands for it. This is how... Oh, this is his, and he's starting to give it back so well I know he's getting it. This hug. So truly, so tenderly, we stop having arms, and I don't know if my lover has walked away or what, or if the woman is still reading the poem, or the houses... What about them? The houses. Clearly, a little permission is a dangerous thing. But when you hug someone, you want it to be a masterpiece of connection, the way the button on his coat will leave the imprint of a planet in my cheek when I walk away, when I try to find some place to go back to. Again, that was The Hug by Tess Gallagher. The next one that I want to read um, is called He Sits Down on the Floor of a School for the Retarded, and it is by Alden Nowlin, who I don't know, aside from this poem. Alright, he sits down on the floor of a school for the retarded. I sit down on the floor of a school for the retarded, a writer of magazine articles accompanying a band that has met at the door by a children, by a child in a man's body who asks them, are you surprised? Oh, man, I'm reading this one totally wrong. I'm going to start over. Sorry. I sit down on the floor of a school for the retarded, a writer of magazine articles accompanying a band that was met at the door by a child in a man's body, who asked them, Are you the surprise they promised us? It's Ryan's Fancy, German on guitar, Fergus on banjo, Dennis on penny whistle. In the eyes of this audience, they're everybody who has ever appeared on TV. I've been telling lies to a boy who cried because his favorite detective hadn't come with us. I said he had sent his love, and no, I didn't think he'd mind if I signed his name to a scrap of paper. When the boy took it, he said, Nobody will ever get this away from me. In the voice, more hopeless than defiant, of one accustomed to finding that his hiding places have been discovered, used to having objects snatched out of his hands. Weeks from now, I'll send him another autograph, this one genuine, in the sense of having been signed by somebody on the same payroll as the star. Then I'll feel less ashamed. Now, everyone is singing, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, and I don't know what to do about the young woman. I call her a woman, because she's twenty-five at least, but think of her as a little girl. She plays that part so well, having known no other. About the young woman who sits down beside me, as if it were the most natural thing in the world, rests her head on my shoulder. It's nine o'clock in the morning, not an hour for music, and at the best of times, I'm uncomfortable in situations where I'm ignorant of the accepted etiquette. It's one thing to jump a fence, quite another to blunder into one in the dark. I look around me for a teacher to whom to smile out my distress. They're all busy elsewhere. Hold me, she whispers. Hold me. I put my arms around her. Hold me tighter. I do, and she snuggles closer. I half expect someone in authority to grab her or me. I can imagine this being remembered forever as the time the sex-crazed writer publicly fondled the poor retarded girl. Hold me, she says again. What does it matter what anybody thinks? I put my other arm around her, rest my chin in her hair, thinking of children, real children, and of how they say it. Hold me. 
and of a patient in a geriatric ward I once heard crying out to his mother, dead for half a century, I'm frightened, hold me, and of a boy soldier screaming it on the beach, of Nelson in Hardy's arms, of Frida gripping Lawrence's ankle until he sailed off in the ship of death. It's what we all want in the end, to be held, merely to be held, to be kissed, not necessarily with the lips, for every touching is a kind of kiss. She hugs me now, this retarded woman, and I hug her. We are brother and sister, father and daughter, mother and son, husband and wife. We are lovers. We are two human beings huddled together for a little while by the fire in the Ice Age 200,000 years ago. Okay, well, that's it. Those are the two poems, so hope you like them. Bye.